and misses. Incredible possess clairvoyance in addition to their other powers. Redditor slash you slash super blue believes the Incredibles are concealing even more powers, citing the names of the children as proof Helen and Bob Parr possess clairvoyance Mr. and Mrs. Incredible have three children, Violet, Dash, and Jack Jack. Each child seems to be obviously named for their superpowers. Unless Dash and Violet were named after displaying their powers or unless their powers surfaced right at birth, then Bob and Helen got really lucky that their powers just happened to perfectly match their names. We know that Jack-Jack was not named after his powers being displayed, because they don't surface until well after his birth and name are given. As per DVD extras, Frazone mentions his powers surfaced one day when he wanted a popsicle. If Jack-Jack is any indication, what are the chances of just randomly picking three names that match superpowers so well? I think one or both of the parents has some minor clairvoyance, and were attracted to those names because on some level, they subconsciously knew those names would work out perfectly. Buddy is the son of Sequave and Universal Man. This theory argues that Buddy Pine Aka Syndrome is a non-super even though he's the son of two super-powered beings, specifically Sequave and Universal Man. The evidence supporting this theory is multifaceted. Violet Parr is an older boo from Monsters, Inc. Redditor slash you slash Ozertron's theory is enough to make any Pixar fan squeal. Ozertron has a pretty in-depth theory, so here is the TLDR version. Buddy is the son of two supers, Phylangi and Apogee. Working off another theory about Buddy's parentage, Redditor slash you slash Obrisa concluded Buddy must be the son of Phylangi and Apogee because he looks most like them. This Redditor then dives into Buddy Pine Eka Syndrome's pathologies that suggest he may be the child of supers. It starts with Buddy being neglected as a child due to his parents' time-consuming occupation. Furthermore, he idolizes supers to an unhealthy degree, desperately wishing to be one himself a complex further compounded by his parents' powers. Because of his parents' status and association with other supers, not only would Buddy be subjected to the presence of various supers, but he might even have access to certain technologies exclusive to that group. This would have allowed him to tinker with advanced tech and ultimately lead to his evil genius persona. Violet is Helen's daughter, but not Bob's. Redditor slash you slash Dizzy Long Day on 101 believes she knows why Violet has black hair while Mrs. Incredible has red and Mr. Incredible blonde. Deceased superhero Snug had black hair, which is part of her argument to support this theory. Here's the rest, first of all, Violet is the firstborn child of the couple. Since the Parr family have been constantly moving because of Bob's inability to maintain a steady job, it would have been difficult for Helen to sustain her adulterous relationship with Snug throughout her married life. Therefore, Helen could have slept with Snug before the supers were outlawed when she was in a good spot or immediately after the supers were outlawed where Snug the bug could have provided her with the metaphorical shoulder to cry on. And he must have moved on from the shoulder to other body parts. And conveniently so, Violet is her firstborn and boom. Second of all, Helen keeps a picture of Snug and her in her room next to the picture of her family. We do not see any picture of Bob with any of his old colleagues. This proves Bob was monogamous simpleton and Helen was a vixen. She must have borne his child, 
which is why Snug lent her a freaking jet without complaining. And in Helen's own words, I'm calling in a solid you owe me. Which translates to you got me preggers now I want a jet as child support now. Thirdly, Violet is the weirdest kid of all three. Everything about her is strange. She is weird and moody while the boys are full of energy. She is introverted while the boys are extroverts. Even Violet's powers are weird. Also, you should remember that Bob's power is super strength and invulnerability, aka raw power. Dash is super fast. Speed. Energy. Jack Jack is the most powerful super, a shapeshifter, while Violet's powers are invisibility and force fields. Defensive powers. Clearly, she did not get the attacking gene of Mr. Incredible. Lastly, let's come to the main reason of them all. All, 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 all. Violet's face is shaped like a football, which is not the head shape of both Helen and Bob. Check out Snug's face. Face. The exact shape of Violet's head. Edna Mode is actually a super. Like others, Redditor slash you slash, the darn believes Edna designed Syndrome's super suit with the intention of sabotaging him, as it included a cape. However, this Redditor also believes Edna is a super herself. Edna has worked closely with the supers for years. It is possible that every super who requests an outfit has it made based on their abilities. It is also possible that she knows of being a super but chooses to hide it. So what is her superpower anyways? She can spot a super the moment she sees them. That is, she can tell if someone is a super without even seeing the power or of being told of it. Remember when she was showing Elastigirl the new suits? She had everything detailed according to the family's powers. She may have been told about their powers beforehand, but what about Jack Jack? She knew all along. The parents don't even know of his powers yet, but Edna knew. Remember when Syndrome was flying away with Jack Jack? He was able to transform into a metallic version of himself and even a molten version. This is exactly what Edna prepared for with the suit when showing it to Elastigirl. There is one transformation that Edna did not cover though, so it is possible that she does not know how to make a suit to cover that transformation. So why does she need to hide it? Edna is possibly smarter than a regular person, so she knows she should keep her power hidden. She is a designer, this is her work. She does this for income and works with the supers on the side. It is possible the government knows this. When it was time for the supers to go into hiding, Edna was possibly told to discontinue working with the supers, but she remains working as a designer. If she revealed her power, then she too would be told to go into hiding, which would mean she may have to discontinue her work as well. Jack Jack's panoply of powers will coalesce into a single, cohesive power set. Redditor slash you slash spas Midhans thinks it's unlikely Jack Jack actually possesses unlimited powers as he displays in the final confrontation with Syndrome. Taken at face value, Jack Jack comes out of the Incredibles as the strongest and most overpowered superhero in history. Between the ending and the Jack Jack attack, he is shown to possess all sorts of superpowers including levitation, teleportation, human torch as flame body, turning into a rage monster and transforming into steel. Instead of assuming Jack Jack is some sort of omni hero, I think it's more like his powers are still developing because they only just manifested. Over time, though, his power will focus and become a single, 
cohesive set of powers like the rest of his family has. And I think this is a natural part of gaining powers in the world of the Incredibles. Remember that when the rest of the Parr family first sees Jack Jack use his powers, they don't marvel at the fact that he demonstrates several unique powers at once. That's because they've seen these symptoms before. Every young super in this world goes through a power development phase where they briefly have access to the whole gamut of powers. Over time, though, their body will latch onto a specific power that works well with that person's specific skills and personality. Every other par family member has a power that fits his or her personality. Dash is impatient and impulsive. He gets super speed. Violet is shy and defensive. She gets invisibility and force fields. The same arguments can be made for the rest of the family. And I think that when each of them first started developing powers, their bodies got to try out a whole range of them before focusing on developing the specific power that would work best for that person. I like to compare it to a stem cell. Jack Jack's powers are new and young and will eventually develop into one specific power as he matures. While it's still in flux though, he has the potential to develop any superpower available. The government eradicated all supervillains after the heroes were forced into retirement. Redditor slash you slash quirky peaker paraphrases Paula Cole asking, where have all the villains gone? This Redditor has a theory about what might have happened to the baddies once all the heroes went into hiding. My theory is that the government carried out a brutal, merciless purge of all supervillains when the superheroes were forced to retire. Think about it. All villains we see in the movie are normal humans. If not for the kindness of superheroes, who just punch and arrest them, they would be dead after a single encounter. Mr. Incredible could have pulled bomb voyage head off his shoulders and solved that problem for good. I'll support this theory with all the villains seen in the movie. Start with a minor one, that guy with the missile during the no capes montage. He's just an ordinary man with a missile pointed at a city. A few policemen could have beaten him if they got the drop on him. Same for Bomb Voyage. The Underminer is similarly a man with a massive drill we may have no feats for him. But even if his drill is syndrome level tech, unlikely a sniper sniffing him out when he makes a dramatic speech is a doable strategy, even if it involves insane planning and sacrifice. Truth be told, syndrome is the only real threat. And his tech is not only leagues above the other villains, but his plan is still flawed. Desperation measures like saturation bombing would have killed him if he decided to go full villain in the eyes of the government. Despite his claims, Syndrome actually is a super, and his power is intelligence. Redditor slash you slash Frank West 21 CP doesn't believe Syndrome's assertion that he lacks powers, but instead thinks it's possible he possesses super intelligence. Very early in the movie, Buddy later known as Syndrome admits that he has no powers but makes up for it with his inventions. The first invention we see are his rocket boots, and later on we see a myriad of brilliant gadgets such as zero-point energy, tiny bombs, life sign scanning probes, an artificially intelligent battle robot, etc. All of these brilliant inventions make me think Syndrome actually did have a superpower, super intelligence. Seriously, you surely have to be one smart cookie to craft such incredible pieces of technology, right? One might say Syndrome was actually very smart because he made some really idiotic mistakes, such as letting the Incredibles lie using a cape, underestimating his battle, robots, intelligence, etc. However, I think that these mistakes have more to do with his arrogance than his intelligence. 
He was so smart that he considered himself infallible and unbeatable. This led to his master plan failing almost immediately as well as his death. The government was in cahoots with Syndrome to wipe out the supers. Redditor slash you slash Honeybee Hound has an incredibly cynical theory suggesting Syndrome's genocide of superheroes was actually sanctioned by the government. Remember those government agents in The Incredibles. Their job was to watch the supers while they were retired to make sure they didn't reveal themselves to strangers. They run the relocation program. When Mr. Incredible throws his boss through several walls, an agent offers to relocate him then decides it would better to wipe away everyone's memory MIB style. So their job is to watch supers so they could prevent situations like that. If their job is to watch supers, why didn't they do anything or show concern when supers were disappearing? How did they not know that they were being escorted to Syndrome's island? That was like their main job right. According to the film, a majority of the supers were killed, so it's weird they chose to not care. That is unless they were working with Syndrome or at least tolerating his experiments. Syndrome was the best solution on dealing with the supers. Killing them off meant the government didn't have to spend a fortune protecting them and cleaning up their mistakes. In exchange, Syndrome was making high tech for the government. Syndrome was a business entrepreneur, he had to have high-end customers. It makes sense, he would sell to the suits. He betrays them when he takes over the city, but still no one gave an SH asterisk P when he killed supers. Who would miss them if they appeared like seclusive ordinary citizens? The suits weren't expecting the Incredibles to make it off Syndrome's island alive. Edna sabotaged Syndrome by making him a cape. Superhero fashion mogul Edna Mode is strongly opposed to capes for very practical reasons. But what if that practicality was born from trauma? The wrinkly writer Tumblr hosts a compilation of discussions and theories surrounding Edna, Stratagale, and Capes. Stratagale was only in The Incredibles for a moment during the montage conveying the danger of Capes. She was the one who got sucked into the turbine of a jumbo jet. Later in the movie, we catch a glimpse of her record, which specifies she was a high school student. The theory goes that Edna's aversion to capes is so strong because she feels responsible for this death. But, the theory also speculates Syndrome came to her for his costume design, wanting to follow in Mr. Incredible's footsteps, and she built in a cape to sabotage him, knowing he was villainous. Edna Mode is a reformed villain. Edna Mode is a reformed villain. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.